Hey everyone, I'm back in the bathroom for part three of the tile backer installation. Now, I originally planned on only having three parts to this installation, but it appears we're going to have four parts. So, and what we're going to cover in this particular video is the right wall installation. So, stay tuned. So, I got the backer board material up on this wall cut out the niche felt great about that then I moved to the other wall got the backer board material up it looked really good nice and flat across the top nice and tight to the ceiling looked great then I took a step back and I said something not, something is not right across the tub so right across here across the tub the backer board was kind of maneuvering a little bit away from the tub so I had the reveal, basically the space between the backer board and this tub here and over here and here was not the same. And that's because the walls were not square to each other. So we've got plumb, we've got level, and we've got square. So this is a square that I use to check for square. Just a simple carpenter square here. Put that in the corner. And you can see that one's just a little bit out. I was okay with that. I was not going to adjust this wall just for that little bit. So here's another square that I used. And that one's is pretty close. So I was not going to touch this wall. The other wall was another story. That is the one that I've been working on probably for about the last week. So I'm going to walk through this other wall and I'm going to talk a lot about what I did on the other wall. All right, so let's talk about this wall. This is the one that gave me the most trouble. Uh, so basically, this wall was both out of plumb and out of square. So when I put the square in the corner now, it's just a hair off. I was not going to get it perfect. I knew that. But I wanted to get it as close as possible. So you can see right here, this is the original stud. It's about an eighth of an inch back from the new stud. So I'm going to go down this whole wall and I'll talk about exactly what I did in here to get this nice and square and nice and plumb. Alright, so I've got the tape measure down on the floor and what I wanted to do is square up the wall by checking the floor. Because I remember early on in this project that when I measured the width of the, uh, from the left wall to the right wall, it was about 60 and a quarter at the front of the bathroom and about 60 inches somewhere around there at the back of the bathroom. So I've made the corrections already. The tape measure base is 3 and 3 eighths, so we got 56 inches plus 3 and 3 eighths. That's 59 and 3 eighths. Plus we also have backer board material on that other wall, so that's around 59 and 7 eighths. All right, so what I'm doing here now is I'm checking the measurement between the two walls at the front of the bathroom. So we've checked at the tub and now we're checking at the front of the bathroom. So you can see right down there, it's 56 and a half plus a three and three eighths of an inch for the tape measure base. That puts us at 59 and seven eighths, just like our measurement at the tub. So that means our floor is nice and square. So that's what I was going for here. If our two walls are square to the outside wall, that means our floor is going to be square too. And so when we go and install tile on the floor, we shouldn't have to worry about any weird irregular cuts. All right, so you'll notice there's a string right down there. And that string got, runs to that corner right there all the way to the other corner. So how I established that string line is basically what I did was I measured our floor over here, which was somewhere around 60 and a quarter or something like that. And I subtracted the quarter inch on this side because the other wall was square. So I wanted to bring this wall over this way. So that string represents that squareness now. All right, so what I wanted to do next is establish plumb. So I knew down there that it was our established square line and that I wanted to establish plumb, meaning I wanted the wall studs to all be nice and straight up and down now. So I had to establish a string line up here, which was not going to be a quarter of an inch away from the wall because, like I said, this wall's not plumb. So I know I'm not, I'm not showing exactly what I did here. That's why I'm trying to make this explanation as quick as possible. But basically what I did was I used a plumb bob. You probably saw this device in the garage heater video. So since I knew my string line down there was our square line, now I could establish plumb off that square line. So what I had to do is hang the plumb bob off the ceiling like this down to our square line on the floor or near the floor. So once I got that, marked that off on the ceiling, transferred that over here to this wall, ran another string to the corner. 
Now we have a wall that's nice and plumb, basically an invisible wall at this point, but it's nice and plumb, but it's also nice and square. So next, anywhere I could sister the stud as opposed to trying to put any sort of shims or anything on the face of the stud, that's what I did. That would be a lot easier because I could cut the board straight on the table saw, come in here, install them, and be done. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to worry about planing down certain studs that maybe weren't flat or doing other things to make sure that the stud was nice and flat. And that was just going to be too much of a headache. So I started, first of all, with this one over here in the corner. And that is not a full 2x4. I, didn't, I thought about using a full 2x4, but as you can see, there's a lot of wires in this wall over here. So there just was not an opportunity to get a full 2x4 in there. I actually had to notch out in several areas. And this one ended up being about two and a quarter inch deep. Again, we are not sistering here for any sort of structural integrity or any sort of strength enhancement. All we're doing is sistering so we can put drywall up. So I have one screw installed every 16 inches on center. I would probably install the screws staggered. So every 16 inches on center and stagger the screws. I just don't have enough space right there. There's just not enough material to put two screws in in a staggered format. So got that first stud in. Then I moved to this next stud, did the same thing on this next stud right there. And those were the two studs that I used to kind of base the rest of the studs off here in the bathroom. So I actually shimmed the face of this stud. I checked it with the level. It was nice and flat. You can see there's a pipe right there. So trying to get a stud in, I'd have to put it on this side. And then down below... You see there's a pipe on this side so I'd have to put our sister on that side that just didn't make sense to me and there's also a chance that I could hit a pipe with a nail or a screw if I were to uh, try to do it in that format and I forgot where exactly where they were so I decided to go ahead and to shim the face basically using the same principles I'd use for doing the back wall where I made those super shims and I just cut those into pieces there so you may not want to do it this way I may end up changing this so that the shims are out so that the drywall has a little bit more support behind it. Uh, but uh, I just did it this way because I wanted to hide the shims and did not want to have those bulge out into the drywall. All right, so there's our next set of studs right there. Right over here. You can see there's a bunch of pipes running through there, so I had to notch for those. And I didn't put nail plates over those pipes right there because they are more than an inch and a quarter back. So an uh, inch and a quarter is the requirement, the code requirement for putting up nail plates. If you have your pipes closer than an inch and a quarter, you need to put up nail plates to cover those pipes. And if we come down the wall, you'll see right down there, I actually put a nail plate over this one. And you can see I also recessed the nail plate. So since I was already cutting this on the table saw, I used the dado set and made a little bit of a dado right there so I could recess this uh, plate so it wouldn't stick out. It's probably a little less than an eighth of an inch recessed. Then we'll move on to this next set of studs right over here. So what's going to happen here, this is a transition point right here. So we're going to have the backer board material in here, start to drywall over here. So these have to be pretty flat across here. So using the super shim method again, I shimmed out this whole set of studs all the way down to the floor. You see that all the way down to the floor. I did have to sand this down a little bit just to make sure that it met our string lines. Right there. And you may notice that the nail plates are behind the shims here and they're recessed. So I did, I took the oscillating tool and cut a little bit of a recess into these studs. Now this is hidden right now. I've already had this inspected, so the inspector already came and inspected for the wall hung toilet that I put in, and so I did have these nail plates up when they came. So if you have not, if you do something like this and you have not had an inspection done, you may fail your inspection because they can't fully see the nail plates. All right, so there is the next set of studs. You can see right down here, I'll point you down there so you can see it, we've got some rot in this stud. So I decided not to shim the face of that stud and just go ahead and sister alongside it. So I've got screws staggered again. You can see right there on the side, every 16 inches on center, I've got three inch screws installed. Now I did have to notch out for the tub right there because the lip of the tub kind of goes this way and it was impacting the stud. So I did have to notch out a little bit for that. 
So one important thing that almost tripped me up on this stud is that when they installed this original stud, they installed it not straight. It was at an angle like this. And I remember when I installed the backer board material, for some reason it kept catching on the side of the stud. And when I put the screw in it, it created a hump. And I couldn't figure out exactly why that was. And then I took the board down, of course, looked at the stud and saw that it wasn't straight. So the sister that went up here, I had to figure out how to make this nice and flat across here, across the whole wall. I could shim out between the two studs. That's one option. But I thought to myself, really all I'm doing is changing the angle of the face of this sister stud. So how do I do that? So it's a little bit of a math problem. So basically all I have to do is turn this into a pitch. So a pitch is like a 512 pitch on a roof, 412 pitch on a roof, that kind of thing. So usually it's in units of 12. So if the string is touching here on the stud, and it's a little bit off here, I just need to figure out what this little bit off is, which was around a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. This here is an inch and a half wide. So all you do is take your eighth of an inch over one and a half. So what's the equivalency of that in 12? So you got your one eighth of an inch over one and a half equals X over 12. So we're solving for X. So once you figure out what X is, you throw that into an angle calculator like on blocklayer.com and it's going to give you an angle. So in this case it was a little bit over three degrees. So all I had to do is cut the angle on the table saw at a little bit over three degrees on the face so that this is nice and flat with the rest of the wall. And the last stud over there, I just went ahead and sistered that. See right there, there are several chunks missing in that original stud so I thought it was best to just go ahead and sister that without any sort of hesitation there. I just went ahead and did that. Also the blocking down below, I had to pull that out. So I used the same method I'd used originally to install the blocking where I ran a piece of wood across there to act as kind of a barrier. Then I set the blocking up against that and then screwed it in. So that's all nice and flat there. All right, so then the last thing to do here was to shim out the top plate and the bottom plate. The top plate was thankfully nice and flat. So all I had to do there basically was just use the super shim method that I've been using all along on this project. And that worked out pretty well. You'll probably notice that I have a lot of ends up there. And that's because that's where I put my nails. I wanted to make sure that I did not nail into a pipe. So that whole top plate's all done. And then pretty much the same thing with the bottom plate. Very, very simple. So I did make sure I marked out for where the pipes were before I put the uh, nails in. So that worked out pretty well. You probably noticed that I have some blocking in the corner and that's because I wanted to bring that stud out a little bit. The stud in the corner was not plumb first of all. Also it was not far enough out. Alright so I've got the board cut just like the board on the left side. This is the right side board. It's got the same profile right in here. You notice this area is a little bit wider because we're extending a little bit past the uh, tub surround. What I'm laying out right now is where I'm going to put the holes for the tub spout, the shower valve, and then hopefully you can see this. This up here is the shower head. So what this is right here, this is the escutcheon for the tub spout. That's three and a quarter inches. And we've got our shower valve cover. That's about five and a half inches wide. And then we've also got our, that is the trim that's going to go over the shower valve. That's about seven inches in diameter, around seven and a quarter. This up here, the escutcheon for the shower head, is about two and three quarters in diameter. So the reason why I'm throwing out all these measurements is because I need to decide what size holes I want to make. I don't want to make those holes too large. So the pipe for the tub spout and the shower head is three quarters of an inch. So I have a sample pipe there. And then I went and bought a couple hole saws. This is an inch and a quarter. This one's an inch and three eighths. So I just have to decide which one I'm going to use. I don't want to make the hole too large, but I also don't want to make it too small where it's not going to, the backer board's not going to fit correctly. So that's the inch and three eighths. That's the inch and a quarter. I am leaning more towards the inch and a quarter. Now as far as the valve is concerned, 
we could try to trace around that. I don't feel very confident that I'm going to get that exactly right on. Uh, so probably the best thing would be to measure uh, probably around six inches since this is five and a half. Make that six inches total in width. And then possibly, I'm not sure if I want to make the same shape or if I want to make a circular shape. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking circular is because I may go with a curdy mixing valve seal. And that typically requires a circular shape. So what I've done on the board is I've marked out where I'm going to make my holes. So right here, there's one right there. Crosshairs, another one here. Um, so see the diagram that I'll put up. I'll show you where I'm going to make the holes. And I did a lot of the measurements in relation to the ceiling because the ceiling is stationary, whereas down here we have a little bit of a gap. So I had to kind of guess, okay, well, since I have a gap down here, if I measure from the edge of the board up, will I have my holes made in the proper space? So I thought it's probably better just to measure down from the ceiling and make my holes that way. So, so this is marked out over here, and then also we've got it marked out up here. One last thing to mention is I also need to cut out for the toilet shutoff that's going to go somewhere in this area. So I have to remember to do that also. That is a 5A 7 inch diameter pipe, and I'm probably going to make the hole saw cut about, probably about an inch. So I'm going to use a center punch just so I can make sure that the bit doesn't wander on the hole saw. That's set. I'll do the same thing up there when we get to that one. Alright, let's do our shower head hole. Alright, so one other thing I was looking at is even though the diameter of this trim is seven inches or seven and a quarter, the gasket where the gasket sits right inside there is about five and I think it's five and five eighths. So that's something I need to keep in mind also. I don't want to have the gasket just kind of hanging out there if there's nothing really for it to sit on. A very important consideration was accessibility to the stops so the cartridge can be replaced if necessary. Alright, so I'm going to use the roto zip to cut the circle I'm going to make for the shower valve. That's going to be 5 and 5 eighths of an inch. And so here is the roto zip. This is a circle cutting attachment. I've got the guard right there. So I need to put this component inside the guard. That so goes in like this. See it slides right underneath here. Just kind of snap it forward like that. And then there's a hole back here where this pin sits like that. Then this goes on here. Then pull this lever over and that's on. And next this is the circle cutting attachment. You can see there's some marks on the side. Hopefully you can read that. So we got inches on this side, centimeters on this side. So I'm using inches since I'm in the United States. And I've got it around five and five eighths of an inch. I'll put that on here. You want to have the pin facing the same direction as the blade. Put that on. This goes on here. Just screw it down. Make sure that's centered. And then this tightens up. And that's pretty much it. It's ready to go. Alright, so this is our crosshairs right there. I've got the center punch and then I'm going to drill a 1 8 inch hole right there here also. And then now our pen can slide, can sit right down in here. One other thing you want to make sure is that the bit is deep enough to go through the board too. So I think it's about three quarters of an inch right now.
right, so then the last hole I measured down from the ceiling and the center point. The pipe is 5 eighths of an inch. This is the uh, toilet shutoff pipe, by the way. So it, I measured down from the ceiling down to here. It is 86 and 5 sixteenths to the center of the pipe. And then from the wall over, since it's a 5 eighths inch pipe, the center point is right here at 5 sixteenths from the edge. Okay, that's better. All right, so the backer board's in on the right wall. Looks pretty good. The hole locations are a little bit off, and I think that's because I changed the wall configuration. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. Backer board is pretty flat. There's maybe a couple spots where it's just a little bit out. Also notice around the tub, you'll see that the space between the edge of the tub and the backer board is the same all along here now. So that looks good. I've got quite a few things left to do in the tub surround, so I'll get to those. I've got the niche to take care of. I've got the window to address, what we're going to do around the window. I've also got to seal a bunch of corners in between the backer board and the drywall. So if you look at the tub surround around the ceiling, it's nice and level. There are no large gaps anywhere, so that looks pretty good. All right, so there you have it. So after several weeks of toiling away in this bathroom, I'm at a point now where it feels like I can move forward comfortably without any doubts. That was the one thing I was really worried about is I would get to the end of this project and really look back on it and say, you know what, that's not right. The way I did this after all this time that I spent in this bathroom, it just, just doesn't look good. So we'll see what happens from here on out. I apologize that I could not provide more of a visual of the changes that I made, but I honestly had a ton of tools in here everywhere. And the garage was loaded up with a bunch of stuff. I had wood everywhere, sawdust, uh, drywall dust everywhere. It just wouldn't have been very valuable to have the camera in here and try to record what I was doing. So hopefully this information was helpful though. And thanks for watching. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.